underway, and now we are in the post show with Tom Preen. Anybody wants to ask questions, anything that we didn't get to answer for you guys, um, feel free to uh, to chime in. And Tom, I don't know if you want to share your screen, go over some of those things we didn't get to go over. Whatever you want to do, now is the time to to fulfill all those questions that we were getting asked the whole time. <laughs> all right, well, let's start with some questions then. Okay. So I'm going to roll through. Um, looks like we got, um, we did answer the pricing question, um, which was for studio users, it's 179 for the upgrade. For pro users, it's uh, 199 um, Let's see, what other questions did we get? I'm sure a lot of questions are going to come up about the NDI, but it's fairly straightforward. If, you're, if you support NDI, you should be able to have NDI. Um, oh, you know what, Tom, Tom? The other thing is that there's a little bit of latency, so some of these questions might be coming in late. Um, okay. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Uh, I, I don't know what happened. Uh, I seem to have lost the network connection, so I... I uh, Put in a hard wire. I was on on wireless. That's why we lost it. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Well, I'm still seeing you here, and I can hear you. Um, okay. So a uh, a desktop capture or uh, screen share, if you wanted to, would be fine as well. Sure. Um, Are there any questions while I while I do this? Will Brown said woohoo. <laughs> Bruce Richardson said awesome. Thanks. Um, I will. Yeah. Uh, okay. Screen share. Yeah, why don't we go ahead and just give uh, give people this the uh, the full screen share um, view of Wirecast Seven, so that for those who have not ever seen it before, and we still got their attention, we'll give them a little uh, little preview. Okay. All right, so we can see your screen, Tom. All right, I mentioned before that. Um the editor now flies open and it's it's live right there while you do editing. I, I call it a dynamic editor. Uh, the the next tab at the top, if you see uh, my mouse, is shot layer properties and I can scale the, the, the particular uh, source. You can see my eyeball there or make myself smaller. Uh, X and Y rotation, put myself wow. upside down backwards uh, the opacity you can control um, I set a mat now th this most of these things are not new but they're much easier to be able to control um, let's reset the position uh, set that up I can obviously crop it uh, which is very easy to do these days with Wirecast 7 and I can also change uh, as I mentioned the the color, the brightness, contrast, the gamma, hue, and saturation. So it's very easy to uh, to control the color. Um, I can control my audio, chroma key. I have the green screen, but I don't have any any uh, graphic. And I wasn't quite prepared to to show that. Uh, the build-in, build-out properties, which I already have in six, but are right here. Uh, and then a lot more system device properties. So. Again, I mentioned before, video delay, this is where you, you do that. You can set up a different properties here, audio settings, and so forth. Um, Tom, if a, couple, I a couple more questions are coming in. I don't know if you want me to, okay. you want to just keep going sure. to read them to you? So yep. Los, Los Videos is asking if there's any new solutions for bringing in Skype interviews into Wirecast 7. Uh, that's something that's on our roadmap uh, within, the time, uh, within the lifetime of 7. Uh, and we're, we're, uh, we're working on it. We have, um, we have a relationship with Skype, and we've been uh, working on uh, how best to, to implement that. Cool. So, and ju just so you guys know how we're doing it, I've got a second computer running Zoom video conferencing, although everyone likes to use Skype. I like Zoom because it can support more than up to 50 users. And I'm taking the HDMI out into a Magewell frame grabber, plugging it in the USB and it's just like another camera and I just use it that way. Um, Bruce Richardson is asking, can Wirecast create overlays and motion graphics? Yes. Um, one of the things that I'll, uh, I'll show here, and this is, uh, I'll, I'll get to the, the titler that we have, but I wanted to show this as well because 
this is a nice feature that does add um, a lot of uh, interest to your, wait, let me get the whole thing here. I'm trying to copy it and paste it so I get enough text. Um, all right, so I've, I've put in some live text there. As you see right here in the middle of this window, I can do, I can type in my text in this box. I can grab it from a text file on my own computer, or if I want to bring an RSS feed in, uh, there's the option there for RSS feed. Um, there's the typical things you can do with, with uh, text, uh, and I can set up some of the things that I want to do with it, including uh, all of this, all of the control of the, the type itself. If I want to scroll it, I want to do it nonstop, and I want to do it right to left, to like a CNN or ESPN type of uh, type of feed. There, let's uh, let's go back to this. Uh, there's the text that shows up as a source, and I want to scale it a little larger. So that's uh, that's some fun stuff to do. I can push all this live. So. Uh, that's, that's a lot of cool stuff. Now, as far as adding motion graphics, uh, you, you have a Tyler Pro Live option. Now, as I mentioned before, what will be coming with Wirecast 7 is a built-in express version of, of uh, Tyler, but they, there are also upgrades to a uh, much more complex uh, uh, titling system that gives you uh, control sort of like After Effects if you get the, the top version of Titler. So I am launching it, uh, getting into the Titler itself. Hopefully it'll show up here. Um, yeah, I'm I guess it, go it goes without saying that once you implement NDI, that's going to open up a hundred different doors. Um, one of them would be Adobe uh, Premiere integration, so anything right. that you can do, and I think After Effects as well, but anything that you can do in those Adobe products has an NDI plugin that you can bring it, you would be able to bring into Wirecast as a source. Right, and what I'm showing you is is what's already integrated into Wirecast. Mm -hmm. uh, it's New Blues Titler Pro, wow. and as you see, I've got I've got a timeline. Uh, if I Pull in um, a different type of of uh, title that that's uh, maybe has some motion to it. I can edit it. I can uh, have a, a lot of control over its attributes, style, effects that I want to add to it, transitions, and so forth. So yes, the answer is yes. You can do a lot. <laughs> I like, you know what, the first time I saw Wirecast 7, I was a little bit afraid because I was just like, you know what, I'm used to Wirecast 6. I never like changes when I get everything working right. But now that I'm seeing you, you know, operate it and go in and out so easily, it's starting to make me think like it's really a, a pretty huge improvement. Yes, I mean, it's, it, it's uh, and, and one reason why the dynamic editor is my favorite is that I think it, it really gives a lot of power to the user. So I mentioned before the output statistics, and here's the, uh, here's the window for that. I don't know if you can, you know, maybe if I start to record, we could um, see some graphics there. And let's start to record. Oh, uh, across the top, maybe you can't see it because it's in gray. But I can see the app CPU utilization or my entire system utilization. So the app is using 15% here. The system is running at about 50 because I have several other applications o open. But Wirecast gives you all that information for that. Uh, let's go back to more information that you get out of it is, uh, is the graph that I mentioned before. Right now it's taking a picture every every five seconds or so. Uh, I'm showing the frames per second here along this this axis. As you can see, it's just coming out. Uh, let's see. I push it a little bit faster than that. There, now you can see some color graphics. Now I'm monitoring uh, 
my my stream. Actually, in this case, I'm monitoring my recording. So I get frame rate, system usage, system memory, and I can put the bit rate on there as well. And it's showing me all that data while I'm recording. Um, we're getting another question, Tom. Um, is it possible to set TRTs for l overlays like lower thirds so that they time out and disappear after a few seconds after being called up? Yes. Uh, let's let's go back to the Titler Pro. Uh, that's something that, uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you that, I don't think. Let's see. Yeah, it's not giving it to me. This is a beta version. I apologize for that. But any of these, uh, any of these types of titles or lower thirds are build-in, build-out examples. Um, if you uh, once you get Wirecast Seven, you'll be able to see uh, how these these operate. So, um, apologize um, for the beta nature of it, but that's software. So one of the things that I think you'll find, um, may, you may or may not find this, but once you build NDI in, I wonder if a lot of people are going to use Wirecast with their TriCasters. Um, because then Wirecast can feed a TriCaster you know, with NDI uh, built in. And you know how New Tech has a huge following of uh, customer bases in like the high-end broadcast studios. Um, but it's really expensive to buy a second TriCaster or something. Now that now they would be able to actually buy a Wirecast and use it as an NDI source into a TriCaster. Yes, I mean that that's interesting because uh, for quite some time Wirecast has been used as an encoding and streaming engine only from a TriCaster. Mm -hmm. So you TriCaster switch into uh, Wirecast to to stream out. Uh, and we've actually had a relationship with New Tech over that in, in the past. Uh, it, it, it'll be an interesting development to, to use the production side of, of Wirecast into a TriCaster, but that will be possible with NDI. Yeah, uh, I, and I, I do think it will happen, and, and here's why. You know, you might have a teacher who already is comfortable with Wirecast who needs to send video to the production studio or you, you have the need to connect five you know cameras over in this part of the campus and have it go to the TriCaster that they already purchased over there and they don't want to spend five thousand dollars for a TriCaster Mini but you know five hundred or a thousand dollars for Wirecast is going to fit the budget a lot nicer and they can just use USB cameras or whatever they're using with a laptop and then stream with NDI directly over to their you know, the broadcast switcher that they already purchased. So I, I need to call time after one more question because okay. Last we question. have to work on the release of Wirecast 7. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I, I think we, 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 you, gotta, you do need to work on that release, Tom. We're all excited for it. We all want to see it coming. Um, so thank you for staying after um, to answer all these questions. You stayed way over time. Um, so what we really appreciate having you. I'd, when when Wirecast Seven does is released, maybe in a few months we could uh, we could have another wrap up meeting to to talk about you know what we've found and let people ask you questions again. But thank you so much for being here, Tom. I really appreciate Let's it. Do that. Thank you, Paul. All right, have a have a good rest of your weekend afternoon, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.